Hello everybody. Happy Thanksgiving week. It has been a long time since we've talked. Thanks to all of you all who watched my fill-in videos as we were cruising our way back from Southampton to Fort Lauderdale. So this week I'm going to catch you up on all the things we did in the last three weeks. The video is a little bit longer, but we've got apes and we've got beaches and we've got margaritas and we've got best friends from fourth grade and we've got um, great art. So I hope that's enough and even a tour of our Airbnb. So hopefully that's enough to have you hang on for the entire time because I really want to get you guys, guys caught up. So where we left off, we were in Bristol, United Kingdom and we were headed to Weymouth. Weymouth is in the southwest corner kind of of, of England and we, so we left, we got on the train and we headed down to Weymouth and Lucky for us, we were on the last train before the train wreck that happened behind us. So if you heard about the train wreck in London or in England, we were one train away from that. So the travel guides are with us and unfortunately it caused us to get delayed all over the place. And we ended up getting down to Weymouth, uh, a one hour journey or two hour journey, it took us like six or seven hours. But interestingly, the British Rail ended up buying us a taxi and paying for us to get to our destination. It was almost a 200 pound so three, two hundred and seventy dollars or something, taxi to get us to our destination. So I can't imagine Amtrak doing that. Anyway, we made it to our destination in Weymouth. Weymouth is one of the trailheads for the Great Coastal Path. A lot of folks know this as the Jurassic Coast and the Jurassic Trail. So we finally got to get some hiking in along the Jurassic Trail. Beautiful views everywhere. We came across this little town that had lighthouses in it and these beach cottages and people come down and stay for the summer. Absolutely loved it. It was so great to get hiking. As you know, I've been wanting to hike for quite a while. My knee and my hip are still a mess. I go to the doctor tomorrow, so I'm looking forward to that. But I just struggled through it because I just so much wanted to get some hiking in. So uh, we did that and really enjoyed Weymouth. Beautiful little town, little beach cottage community, just beautiful place. Uh, well, before we got there, I reached out to a fourth grade best friend. We've known each other since second or third grade and we're best friends up through junior high school. Had not talked to her in years, had been looking for her for 30 or 40 years. Um, couldn't find her on Facebook, couldn't find her on social. Long story short, finally found her, had no idea that my best friend Allison was owner of Monkey World in London or in England. Monkey World is really well known, especially in the primate world. It rescues apes and monkeys from all around the world and from the, the illegal pet trade. She has a lot of the Hollywood apes and gorillas, and she doesn't have any gorillas, but uh, apes and orangutans. And so I got to catch up with her. Our parents were really close, so we were able to kind of fill in some gaps in our own personal histories. It was fabulous. So thank you, Allison, for hosting us, uh, not only for a backseat scene tour of Monkey World, but a beautiful vegan meal at your house and an overnight stay. Love meeting you all, you and your husband, and thank you for the ride to the air, to the, the terminal. That was just fabulous, a win, win, win. If you guys follow Monkey Business or Monkey Life's, uh, the series about Monkey World that's out, there's a new series out now, or new new series, or new set of episodes, new season coming out. So catch up with that. Um, so we got on the boat, The print, we took a princess repositioning cruise out of Southampton to Fort Lauderdale, uh, 15 or 15 night cruise. Um, it's just some FAQs people have asked. The, sh the ship usually has a capacity of 3,500 plus crew. There was 1,300 people on the boat plus the crew. Um, the It was about 95% Americans, which I thought that was very interesting. And uh, you had to be vaccinated and COVID negative to get on the boat, which they, they, they tested you in the terminal. Then on the boat, three or four days in, they tested us again. And then to get off the boat in Fort Lauderdale, we were also tested. Princess paid for all of that. And um, while on the boat, you had to wear your mask in public places. And every time you ate, you had to wash your hands. And they sat there and watched you. So you had to wash them for 20 seconds. And there was Perel everywhere. So uh, despite all of that, four people did come down with COVID on the boat that we know of. And they one person was taken off in Spain before we crossed over the water. And then uh, the rest were quarantined. And I don't know what the results were. So anyhow, but I did feel very safe. But it's just very much, um, I think we are in the, the world, the, the COVID generation, I guess, of where you learn to live with COVID or learn to live around COVID. I don't know. Anyway, moving on, <laughs> trying not to stay on that topic. 
So in uh, on the boat, we had three port stops. The first was in Cherbourg, France. We got off the boat for two days. That's where a lot of people go to go do the Normandy uh, D-Day invasion stuff. We weren't interested in that. We actually, the first thing we found, we found an umbrella factory where they make umbrellas. There's actually a movie about it, Umbrellas in Cherbourg. So we learned how to make umbrellas. And then the second day we came, we went to visit the cemetery and we came across a, uh, uh, the only recognized Civil War cemetery outside of the United States. Here in Cherbourg, a, a Confederate boat had sailed into the port to get repaired, a U.S. Uh, uh, Union soldier boat had wait, waited for the boat to get repaired. They got out of the bay. They had a little fight. Four soldiers died, two Confederates and two Union soldiers. They are buried in the Sherbrooke T Cemetery. And uh, there's a U.S. Navy has sponsored a monument there. And what's interesting is the, a local French soldier memorial organization keeps fresh flowers on the cemetery so, or on the gravestone. So I thought that was just a really neat way to learn some living history and appreciate um, our military. So, right, it's coming into Remembrance Day, so that was really nice. Then the next day we went to Vigo, Spain, where a lot of people could pay $129, get off the boat, and take a bus up to Santiago de Compostela. We got off the boat, went off the, the street to, went across the street to the train station and got, I think they were $10 tickets, to go up to Santiago de Compostela. Now, this is a place in Spain where if you are hiking the Camino, you've heard about the Camino, you saw the movie The Way with Martin Sheen, um, this is where everybody hikes to. They, they hike 500 miles or 100 miles to get to Santiago de Compostela. There's this big church or cathedral. And what I was interested in going just to check it out because I'm thinking that we might hike that when we come back next spring, at least do the Portuguese portion of it. It was very fun to go inside the cathedral. I am not religious at all. I have a real tough time with all the gold on the altars and think makes me think about a lot of things, which I'll say for another day. But um, my grandmother was Catholic, as was my granddad, and so I always get the chance to light a candle for them, which I really appreciated doing here inside the cathedral. So we enjoyed sitting on the plaza and drinking sangrias and watching all the hikers come in and finish their big tour. So that was, that was really cool to do that. And I look forward to going back. Then our last port day, we were in the Azores in Portugal. These are a set of islands off of the Portuguese coast. And they're kind of, they're not a halfway marker, but a lot of ships and ferries and cargo ships come into the Azores to get refueled and restocked before they make, the cross of, the, make it across the pond. I love the place. The city of Punta Delgada, which is the port city, was beautiful. Absolutely loved it. We were only there for a day. And we wanted to go up to the caldera where there is, uh, where all the hiking is. And in the caldera, there's a lake and there's a bridge to the middle of it. And half of it's green and half of it's blue. You have to have good sunlight to be able to see the blue and green. Well, we decided not to do the $129 tour up to the caldera. We jumped on the city bus. They cost us $3. We got up there, and when we got there, we realized that the next bus that was going back was the last bus to take to get back to the boat, and we had 15 minutes. So we ran over, we took a picture, did our drive-by tourism, and got back on the boat to come back. We were probably going to take the same ship back in the spring. It stops in the Azores. We learned that we can take the 8.30 bus in the morning and have four hours of hiking, so stay tuned for that. Uh, if you subscribe to Travel Zoo. They often have packages out of the U.S. for about $500 from Boston to the Azores for like a week long. Totally take it. You will love it. Beautiful place. Cannot wait to go back. We even got a chance to enjoy the little uh, Portuguese past pastela, something the others. Delicious little treats. Um, from there, we had a five-day crossing to Fort Lauderdale. We got into Fort Lauderdale, hopped a plane to Houston, got to Houston, got our booster shots, stayed the night and flew down to Puerto Vallarta. So we were in Puerto Vallarta now for a month, loving it. We were in a fabulous Airbnb. I'm gonna roll you video of this great Airbnb. The, the kitchen's not so great, but the artwork inside, you can see some of it behind me, is fabulous. There's a great outdoor garden to sit in that we sit in every morning and we have our um, breakfast treats in the morning and do a little writing and meditation out there and it's just lovely. We uh, already have been down to the romantic zone on the Malacom, took some pictures down there. Really look forward to a lovely month here of just chilling out, speaking Spanish. The neighborhood that we're in is a very locals neighborhood. 
Um, there's little taco stands on the street. We've met a lot of people already. We've gotten invites into people's houses. It's been really fantastic. So loving it here. We are in Mexico for the winter. So if you are thinking about coming to Mexico this winter, please seek us out. Uh, we will be here in Puerto Vallarta for a month, and then we're going over to the Yucatan for probably two months, and then Aja Ik for a month, and then we end up in Mexico City, and we're going to go check out the butterflies, the the, the migrating um, monarch butterflies. So I think I've caught you up. I've tried to keep this under, tw under 12 minutes because I know it's a lot, but um, I really sh enjoy it sharing this with you and I hope you do as well. Please comment on what you're thinking about and happy Thanksgiving everybody. We'll see you next week.